Hello friends, welcome to NIUS. In this video, we are going to talk about non-standard and standard measures and I am Dr. Haneet Gandhi. So let's look at the objectives of today's video. We would be studying the need of non-standard ways of measuring. We would try to understand how these non-standard ways of measuring contribute in understanding of length, area, volume and weight. And gradually we would look at the standard ways of measuring. More on standard ways of measuring will come in your respective videos related to measuring of length, area, volume and weight. So this particular video would be covering aspects related to non-standard ways of measuring. Let's begin. Children have informal ways of measuring things. They learn from their day-to-day -day experiences. They are familiar with the idea of length. They are familiar with the idea of weight. They are also familiar with the idea of volume and area. When they navigate their way through their classrooms, they understand, into, they understand the idea of space. When they pick groceries, they build an understanding of weight. When they have their bath, they try to get an idea of voluminess. When they measure things through their hands or when they just put themselves into a chronological order of height, they get an intuitive idea of length and tallness as well. But all these gradually then has to be led on to an aspect of comparison and then putting them in, in terms of an arrangement. So on and so forth, all these comes under the non-measurement skills. But to move towards a more formal understanding of measurement, we need to start using certain standard units. But before doing these standard units, we will study about how non-standard ways can also contribute in understanding of measurement. If you're ready, let's begin. So the need of non-standard ways of measuring helps us in, me in, in beginning any measurement activity. It is beneficial for all grade levels. So I recommend whichever grade that you start with and whichever concept that you start with, you should first talk about non-standard units in all those areas. Non-standard units are used to measure the attributes of the object in an informal way. They also provide a good rationale for using standard units. For example, when you do an exercise on non-standard units in the classroom, it is bound to initiate a discussion on a need of standard units. They will attach more meaning after the group would have measured the same object with their own units. Naturally, when they would use their different kind of non-standard units, they would come up with different answers. It might lead to some confusion as well. That's pretty natural. Let them grapple with that idea. Eventually, your task as a teacher should be to move to a standard unit, to have a common non-standard unit and then let them compromise, then let them come to a consensus of getting a common answer. You could also use lot of material to generate these kind of discussions. Non-standard units thus are very, very motivating because children get to talk, children get to experiment, children get to explore. And then moving on to standard units of measurement, they are the units of measurement that are typically used in each measurement system. For example, we often use a ruler, which is a foot long ruler to use inches and centimeters. We also use a meter stick to, see, to look into our uh, length measures, for example, foot, inches or your cloth. Scales use kilograms, grams, pounds and like, depending on the way they are. So knowledge of standard units is an essential objective of a measurement program. Students must not only develop a familiarity with standard units, but must also learn appropriate relationships between them. Once a measuring concept is fairly well developed, standard units can be effectively introduced. So prior to introducing standard measurements, please give them enough experience on non-standard units. How do we choose a unit now? To measure any object, a former step is choosing an appropriate unit. Unit is a block that has same attributes as the measurement property. 
So what I'm trying to say here is if you're measuring length, your unit should have a property of linearity. If you're measuring area, your unit, chosen unit should have a property of area or covering the space. If you're talking about capacity, you need to look at a material that can fill the object completely. It could be liquid or solid such as sand, but it should not leave any spaces. So whatever property that you're trying to measure, you should be careful that the unit you're using to measure should have the similar attribute as the measurement property. So for example, if you're trying to measure the length, you ought to take into linearity into consideration. You should also move in the direction because you're talking about measuring a length. If you're talking about measuring an area, you should be clear that the object chosen should have this should occupy the same space it should fit itself properly they should not leave any gap and it should not overlap similarly if you're looking at measuring volume the object chosen should completely fill up the space it should fit together you should not pick big balls to come to measure volume you may pick sand you may pick liquid because it fills the container entirely without any gaps. So choosing a unit is a very, very important aspect. Having choosing the unit, the next step is about unit iteration. We need to consider this important principle in measuring. The idea of unit iteration is dependent on the attribute of measuring. Again, for example, in case of measuring length, the act of identifying a unit and moving it along the length of the object to be measured without gaps or overlaps and finally counting the number of units that are required. Similarly, when measuring area, unit iteration would mean covering the entire space using the same unit without gaps and overlaps. These properties are very important. As and when you start measuring, you would come to know how unit iteration works. You should be able to identify the idea of unit iteration along with the property of measuring. Let us now look at some of the ways of measuring length, area, volume and weight through these non-standard ways. Let's begin with our one-dimensional aspect which is measuring length. To measure a length, with a non-standard unit, you need to choose the unit that shows properties of linearity. To measure any object with this non-standard linear objects, you need to ensure that the same unit is repeated again and again in the entire length. That's very important. You cannot change different units while doing one measurement. The non-standard unit should be placed along the path being measured and finally exhaust the quantity being measured by repeating the unit without gaps and remember no overlaps. Please understand these properties very carefully. These are going to be used in all aspects of non-standard measurements. Look at this picture. If you look at this picture we have used eraser as our unit. Now that's a non-standard measure. Why I call it a non-standard measure? Because you could pick any other type of eraser as well or a pencil sharpener or paper clips. In this case, I thought of using erasers. You can do the same exercise with paper clips as well. In this case, I want to measure the length of the hand. So I picked the eraser. I placed it linearly along the length of the hand. And it started from the beginning of the hand to the end of the tip. Finally, we realized that I would need four erasers to do such a thing. Please pay attention that there are no gaps and no uh, overlaps while placing these erasers. Counting the number of erasers, I can say that I need four erasers to measure the length of this hand. In other words, the length of this hand is equal to four erasers. When I say four erasers, 
eraser become my non-standard unit of measuring. You can do the same exercise and perhaps you may need 10 paper clips to do the same thing. So your answer in that case would be the length of the hand is 10 paper clips long. Since in your case, the paper clip is the unit, you are giving me the answer in terms of paper clips. In my case, it was erasers, so I give the answer in terms of eraser. Consider this example and you would understand what I mean by having different answers. You got 10 paper clips and I got my answer as 4 erasers. This is the discussion that children will lead to. This is the time when you need to help them understand the need of a standard unit. Because if there is no standard unit, all of us will get different answers. And then how do we ascertain what is the right answer? Would we consider the length of the hand as 10 paper clips? Of four erasers. It will lead to discussion, it will lead to debates, it will lead to arguments. Encourage them, they help in the understanding. Can let them convince each other on why they think it is four erasers and not ten clips and the other way around, why it is ten clips and not four erasers. So, while dealing with non-standard units, Dell children in discussions relate to how the choice of units produce different measurements of the same object. Such activities lead to arguments related to choosing one common unit. Let them conclude that any unit can be taken to measure length as long as it is placed properly. And finally, different units will give different measurements, but the concept of measurement does not change. So, we can now initiate the need of deciding a common unit. Since your children will give different answers to the non-standard unit, it is now important that you let them come to a common unit. A common unit will give them the same answer for the measure of length. You can now talk about the need of using standardized units, such as making a ruler to measure. From the need to selecting a standardized unit, or a ruler with fixed markings. You can use a standardized tool such as a ruler or a meter roll to initiate the discussion on standardized unit. In, case, in the case of standardized unit, notice that each unit is of a standard length. That is why they are called standardized unit. If children are asked to measure the same hand with the help of any of these rulers, they would come up with one common answer. Each of them will have the same answer. That's the beauty of using standard units. Normal discussions now, there is a one common answer. They know how to calculate it. And on details about how to using a ruler would be dealt in the unit of measures of length. Let us now look into non-standard measures of area. Area is a space occupied by a two-dimensional shape on a plane. To measure the area of an object, you need to select an object that shows the same attributes, which is, it must cover the plane, it shouldn't leave any gaps or overlaps. Thus, while measuring area, unit iteration would mean covering the entire space using the same unit without gaps or overlaps. Let me read this line again because it's a very, very important one. Thus, while measuring area, unit iteration would mean covering the entire space using the same unit and no gaps or overlap. In other sense, it should be able to exhaust the entire object that is, it is measuring. In a discussion of how to measure the area of irregular shape, you may pick equilateral triangles circular counters or square tiles as non-standard units for measuring space. What you could do is pick up a leaf or any other object that you wish to uh, measure. Place that leaf on a graph paper. This graph paper could have equilateral triangles which is called an isometric graph or you could also pick up the square regular graph tiles. Let children place this leaf on the graph paper. Trace it out. And then let them count the number of equilateral trials or square tiles 
that get encompassed in that leave. Different answers would come. So for example, one of the child comes up with an answer that while measuring the area, I had to use 20 equilateral triangles, which means 20 equilateral triangles got covered within that leaf, trace of the leaf. Absolutely fine. However, maybe the second child would argue that for her, the leaf would only covering 10 squares. Both of them would be right because they are using different non-standard ways of measuring. The idea of measuring the leaf remains the same. The leaf is the same, but the answer is different, which is absolutely all right because they are using different non-standard ways of measuring. Each unit covers the space and each will give a different result. The discussion should now focus on what it means to measuring area. Area is the space that has been covered. So in terms of triangle, it was 20 equilateral triangles. In terms of square, it was 10 square tiles. Moving on from non-standard units, you would definitely now come to a conclusion of using standardized units. After all, we need the same answer. Historically and conventionally, we use squares to measure as a standardized unit. In order to measure areas in standard ways, we have to choose a shape that can repeat itself on the entire plane and covers the figure with no gaps and no overlap. As I just said, a square is one such two-dimensional shape that can reiterate itself and also cover the entire plane endlessly without gaps and overlaps. So the grid which has been shown to you is a very effective uh, tool to measure the area. Now you can use this graph and give it to your children, let them place many objects on this graph, let them trace it out and then count the number of squares. More on how to count these squares, half squares and quarter of the squares will come in our later videos, specifically when we will talk about measuring areas. So do look out on these videos to get details on how these squares have to be counted, how the half squares contribute in calculating the area. So more on calculation would come in our further videos. Let's now continue with our non-standard ways of measuring volume. Volume is very similar to the concept of area. In two-dimensional spaces, we talk about area. And if we try to do the same thing in terms of three-dimensional spaces, we would look at volume. Often a volume is also taken as capacity and more on difference between capacity and volume would come in the uh, unit on measuring volume. A simple activity for comparing capacities is to compare the amount of liquid that containers can hold. Take two containers. Ask children to fill one container with a liquid and then pour this liquid into another container. So what you're doing is completely fill one container and re reach it to its rim, then can transfer the same amount of liquid to another container. Let children notice. If they find that the poured liquid fill the other container entirely, both of them have same volume. But if the liquid was less, the first container has more volume. And if the liquid, is, liquid would be more, the first container obviously has little vol less volume than the first container. This simple activity would help children to compare the capacities of two containers. More ways of measuring volume is this. Fill a container completely with water. Ask students to immense a ball completely in it. Collect the water that gets displaced. Measure this water in a measuring flask. Do the same thing for another apple. Immense the apple in the water. Note down the measure of volume that has been, water that has been displaced and compare the volumes of water that were displaced in both the times. By comparing the amount of water that was displaced on complete immersions will help you to say which object has more capacity or volume. The object that displaced more water obviously has more capacity. Moving on to the standard unit of measuring volume, we will need a standard object. Like in the case of area, we took a square as a standard object. In terms of volume, we would pick up a cube. Remember or recall, 
A cube is an object in which the length, breadth and height are all same. You may choose a 1 centimeter cube, a 1 meter cube, 1 kilometer cube, 1 inch cube or 1 foot cube. In all the cases, that is your standard unit. So, to measure volumes accurately, we need to choose an appropriate unit. A cubic unit is used for calculating volumes. Small unit of cube which has dimensions 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter is often used as the standard unit for measuring volumes. Place these, stack these cubes in, in the object that you are measuring and the number of cubes that you would be required to measure the object is the volume of the object. Let us move on to how we do non-standardized unit in terms of measuring weight. To measure weight, we need to deviate from our task which we just did. This time, even to measure weight in a non-standard way, we would need an object or a tool. And the most convenient and the most effective tool which is used for measuring weight is the balance scale. Use a balance scale to induct children on the idea of measuring weight in non-standard ways. A balancing scale works on the principle of comparing weight kept on its two pans. Children have an idea of balancing scale because they often visit vegetable market and they see that that is the tool that has been used by our vegetable sellers. They know that when a vegetable seller has to measure a thing, he puts one thing, the vegetables on one pan and the weight on the other. On the same principle, the children can weigh two or more things. If the weights on the two pans are equal, the suspended pans will be at the same horizontal height. And they also know that when we place the objects to be compared on the pans and let the pans suspend freely, the pan that lowers down is the heavier one. These intuitive ideas they have already built up from their everyday experiences. You can build on these ideas further to let them measure things in a non-standard way. I am going to show you a small exercise which you can do it with your class 3 students. So by using non-standard units, you can represent the weight of one object in reference to the weight of the other object. What do we do? We could do an activity of comparing things like pencils, erasers, pencil box and so on and so forth, whatever are easily available to the child. Ask children to compare the weight of a pencil box and an eraser. Pose questions like, how many erasers will balance the weight of a pencil box? Or how many pencils will balance the weight of a book? Such comparisons will help children to equate the weight of one object in reference to the other non-standard object. Here, eraser and pencil are a non-standard units that are being used to compare. And in one such exercise, we got answers like this. When we asked the children to compare, we got certain observations. They placed one pencil on the left plan and to balance it, they realized they need 13 erasers on the right pan. Obviously, the pencil was quite heavy. We then could say that the weight of that pencil is equal to 13 erasers. Erasers now have become a non-standard unit for measuring pencils. Similarly, when 30 pen pencils were balanced, were used to balance two books, we could say that the weight of two books is same as 30 pencils. Encourage children to represent weights as comparable quantities such as the weight of the pencil box is same as 13 erasers. Said differently, you can also say that on a balance scale, 6 pencils weigh same as 2 erasers. You can also use by the way the sign of the meaning of equal to. You can word it in different way like one pencil box is equal to 13 erasers or two books are equal to 30 pencils. Here erasers and pencils have been used as non-standard units to measure pencil box in the first case and books in the second case. Gradually when children have had enough experiences on measuring non-standard units, you can introduce them to the standard units of measuring weight. For example, the eraser was our smallest unit. 
in the same exercise what we did is we replaced the eraser we placed it on one pan and gave children some 1 gram weights we asked them to compare the weight of the eraser in terms of the standard 1 gram weight we also asked them how many grams weigh will balance the eraser so if they needed 2 1 gram weights to balance the weight of the eraser we could easily say that weight of the eraser is equal to 2 grams so our eraser has now been reduced or measured again in terms of the standard unit now the standard unit would not change so whichever child whenever they want to experiment they would realize the weight of the eraser will always be equal to 2 grams and this would not change that is the beauty of using standardized unit they would come up to the same answer a consensual answer let's conclude our, on our learning what we've done through this video let me put you across the important points that you need to remember while dealing with non standard measures so whenever a teacher chooses to teach concepts related to measurement of objects she must give children enough experience to use non standard tools of measurement using non standard measures will obviously to initiate discussions arguments and related uh, experimentations in differences of answer the differences of answer does not mean the measurement has changed it only means that the units that have been used to represent the measure are different let children realize that to reach a common answer gradually they would need a standard tool this is the time to introduce the standard units introduce them to the standard ways of measuring the physical attributes of these objects i hope you would use all these activities into your classroom you would let children experiment with different non standard units you will come you will have lot of discussions into the classroom and only then lead children to the standard units of measurement we will deal with all these in detail in the respective units of measuring length volume area and time gradually in other videos i wish you all a very good class and thank you